A problem so huge in a contract, all £280 million pounds of it so huge that nobody knows what to do about it. London Olympics begins in just four weeks today. So the answer has been to pretend there's no problem and hope for the best. We talked to Lee Hazeldean, who's been undercover at the Olympics security firm G4S. Plus, we go back... Hello, everyone. Welcome back to GGN. This is part two for today, June 27th, 2012. Okay, so this is the... Basically, you can go in there and check it out. It's out there on the internet. It's 46 minutes long, um, but it's... The title is Whistleblower Reveals Plan to Evacuate London During Olympics. So, and it says here there's a shocking plan for the evacuation of London. 200,000 casket lines being stand on standby. Uh, along with the big thing was the Bosch security procedures that leave the games wide open to attack. And the first thing I thought was Jericho, that show uh, with that private company just like G4S um, called what Jennings and Roll. And they're the ones that devised the plan. Uh, in case of a big uh, case of a big attack by by terrorists well the thing was is that the people that wrote it are the ones that helped carry it out or allow it to happen so that's part of the plan you know they're not in the business of actually keeping things secure they're there just to make lots of money like in Iraq where they run loads these truck drivers run loads and there's nothing on them and they're getting shot at and seeing uh, other truckers get killed over it and wash them, you know, washing clothes for $100 and then actually having sand in there still and being worse than uh, when it was the first dirty. So there's a lot of money being made off these, with these private uh, companies, contractors. So you know, the whole thing was about how the security is going to be lax. Even if the security was totally professional, there could still be an attack. I mean, the powers that be want an attack, they'll get an attack. So it doesn't really freaking matter about how secure it is, whether it's the government of England or, uh, you know, the British government or uh, a private contractor. But it says here they reveal a large contingent of soldiers being brought into London for the Olympic Games, including a lot of UN troops being posted in and around London. It says here his most chilling revelation is, uh, that he learned about was preparations to evacuate London and how the security guards used for the Olympics will be used at the forefront of getting the public out of London. And they said here they seem quite serious about it. They spent a lot of time on this. Uh, saying how G4S spent two hours talking about the evacuation of London in comparison to just a half an hour talking about security screening procedures for the Olympics itself. Um, he also noted 100,000 plus troops that would be stationed in London during the Olympics and enough to carry out such large scale evacuations. It was also revealed how uh, predator drones would be circling London in readiness for the terrorist attacks, which is not that big of a surprise. They were doing it in Chicago for the all right, moving on to this article, UK should avoid militarizing the Olympics. As the London 2012 Olympics Games torch approached the capital of the UK, there's a military shadow lurking in the background that runs counter to the spirit of both the ancient and modern games. It says, not since World War II have Britain and US teamed up for such a massive security operation on British soil. Londoners, spectators, tourists, and athletes know that surface-to-air missile batteries will be nearby on rooftops of people's homes with armed jets and helicopters in the skies. Then I saw this article, SWAT team brings TV crew to raid, uh, to film a raid against threatening internet critic, raids innocent grandma instead. So, yeah, it says here in Evansville, Indiana, police intent uh, on sending a message that online threats against police will not be tolerated. Uh, says here that they organize a massive raid against a forum troll on an online forum. The police decide to bring the TV crew to film their raid against a critic, i.e. scare the public, and when they show it in the news, um, you know, don't talk bad about cops. They also brought a SWAT team rather than knock on the accused front door, which was wide open. The police instead threw two flashbang uh, stun grenades through their front window and storm door. Unfortunately, rather than finding the home occupied by a gun-toting cop killer, they found an inter entirely innocent grandmother and 18-year-old girl who were both shocked and confused. So yeah, dressed in full protective uh, police riot gear, they broke the storm door even though the front door was already open. So yeah, they tossed the flashbang uh, grenades in there in their living room, causing them to go almost deaf. Uh, temporarily then it says here a short distance away local television crews cameras were rolling 
It says here that uh, Boland said the SWAT team used its standard knock and announce procedure of knocking on the wall and repeating the words police search warrant three times before entering. The police chief said the procedure doesn't require officers to wait for a response. It's, a desi it's designed to distract, he said. So basically, the police wanted to send a message, mafia style, that no one dare threaten their gang. That's right, they said, this is a big deal to us. This may be just somebody who was online just talking stupid. What I would suggest to anybody who visits websites like this is that their comments be, uh, can be taken literally. TSA agent spills ashes of man's grandfather then laughs. That's right. A man's attempt to bring the ashes of his grandfather home to Indianapolis ended with an angry scene at the Florida airport when the ashes spilled on the terminal floor. So the person said, please be careful. These are my grandparents' ashes. And she didn't even need to open it. She could have put it through an x-ray, but she did it anyways and accidentally spilled it. And most of it spilled on the floor, and then, of course, you had the anxious passengers waiting behind them. It says here, she didn't apologize. She started laughing. I was on, the hands, on my hands and knees picking up bone fragments. I couldn't pick up all, everything that was lost. I mean, there was a long line behind me. Yeah, you got to keep moving, right? You got to keep moving. Travelers run for cover as cops kill cops at Mexico City Airport. That's right. Three policemen died in a shootout with two other officers suspected of drug trafficking at Mexico City's airport on Monday as panicked travelers scrambled for cover, right? It says here, emails suggest Operation Fast and Furious would be used to bolster assault weapons ban and greater reporting. I've mentioned this before, but these are basically what? Uh, emails from people involved in Operation Fast and Furious demonstrate that the operation was more about pushing for gun control than actually getting criminal prosecutions. And speaking of SWAT teams, RIAA chief says ISPs are internet service providers to start policing copyright by July 1st. Comcast, Time Warner, Verizon are among the ISPs preparing to implement a graduated response to piracy by July, says the music industry chief lobbyist. So, yeah, they're going to start, uh, what? They haven't given up the idea of becoming copyright cops. So yeah, all these big companies and other bandwidth providers announced that they had agreed to adopt policies designed to discourage customers from illegally downloading music, uh, movies, and everything else. So yeah, it's basically they're going to send out a bunch of educational notices to customers who are accused of downloading copyrighted content illegally. If they don't stop, they're going to send out confirmation notices that they received it. And it goes on here and says if uh, the accused customers uh, continue to do this, uh, flag for pirating again the ISP can then ratchet up pressure for, and it says here that they can choose from a list of penalties including mitigation measures i.e. they sue you for a quarter of a million dollars for downloading a, a song which including which includes throttling down the customer's connection speed and suspending web access until the subscriber agrees to stop pirating but we also know what the connection speed is ratcheted down if you don't say the right things or you say the wrong things. Guilty until proven innocent, families will have to pay 20 pounds to show they didn't illegally download music under a new law. Internet users who illegally download music, movies, ebooks will be sent warning letters in a crackdown that could lead to court action or co for copyright theft. It says here people wrongly accused of making illegal downloads will have to pay $20 fee to appeal and prove their innocence. And switching over to the economy, five more years of pain. Bank of England governor says financial crisis will last until 2017. Yeah, he's pessimistic, right? So, But it's good. It's good for the banks, actually, because they can keep loaning out uh, money, the central banks and stuff like that. Wealthy Zionists behind U.S. financial meltdown, says analysts. says here, he believes that the affluent Zionists have been behind the collapse of the U.S. financial system. says this is an intimate connection between the collapse of the financial system, both in the U.S. and worldwide, uh, and U.S. international policy, and its manipulation by class, by a class of hyper-wealthy Jewish Zionists. So it says here, he also warned that the ongoing Eurozone debt crisis could send the American economy perhaps back into recession. We're going to see more foreclosures as the economy worsens. There's little doubt about that. Millions of American families have lost their homes due to foreclosures over the past five years as a result of the financial crisis that hit the country. And look at this. The uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, I believe, RBS, brought to its knees by one junior IT technician, inexperienced operative. Sounds more like me to a bank run. So, says what? Uh, froze millions of British bank accounts. Then we have big banks craft living wills in case they fail, which they probably won't. 
that's what corporatism is all about. It's about just, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just dumping money, dumping money, feeding money into it, right? So they could be as long as 14, or sorry, 4,000 pages, and the plans known as living wills are due uh, to regulators no later than July 1st under provisions of the Dodd-Frank financial reform law. So then moving on, we have this article, EU hopes for a big leap, almost like a great leap forward with fiscal political union plan. They're talking about this. Four presidents propose power of Eurozone authorities over national governments. European leaders have drafted a radical plan to turn the 17 countries of the Eurozone into a full-fledged political federation within a decade in an attempt to placate the financial markets by demonstrating a political will to save the single currency in the medium term. So it says here the paper included that the banking union should evolve as soon as possible. And it goes on and it says that they'll have preemptive intervention powers. And the European Central Bank helped co-write it. But the key word is what? Integrated, coordinated, convergence, consolidation. So, And that's why the title of this is what it is. So uh, basically proposed power of Eurozone authorities over national governments. So the unelected European Parliament. So... European Union Parliament. EU creates pro-democracy funds. So they're talking about uh, what we were talking about before, like in Libya and all those different countries, regime change. So the Un European Union, who is now actually, I believe they actually have ships in that, uh, in Africa, in, near Somalia, uh, for military type stuff, they're creating a regime change fund. There's another title for it, Color Revolution Contribution says here that better off families turn to discount supermarkets as middle class feel the squeeze. Discount supermarkets Aldi and Liddy, Liddy or Liddell are experiencing a boom as better off families look for ways to balance a tighter budget as a new study. Yeah, it basically tells you what it is. It's disposable income. It's a war on disposable, disposable income. It says here it is still one of the shoppers putting more effort into their food shopping while contending while with considerable pressures on their household budgets. So, you know, they're talking about record gas prices, utilities in England and the UK, uh, along with what, gas taxes and stuff like that. It says here, America sets a new record for old cars. So it's not just old ones, uh, like this classic right here. I don't know if that's a Chevy. Uh, but it says here, you're not alone. In fact, the average age of vehicles in the US has hit a new all-time high. So like people shopping at discount stores like Dollar General, Aldi's and that, what's behind the increase? The recession and the sluggish recovery or wealthy Zionists means people have been put off, putting off buying or trading in for newer used cars. And I didn't understand the whole uh, cash for clunkers program when it came out right around that 2008-2009 uh, crisis uh, because it's just like, why don't you just hold on to your car and not have to pay uh, um, you know, for a loan, for a car, a car loan, you know, and you got to get full coverage insurance and all that just doesn't seem that smart. So you can go in there to the dealership and get, you know, coaxed by those uh, car salesmen. And another reason is for what? Is uh, they're shit. A lot of these new cars are shit. They're built like shit. So it says here another factor is that the fact that uh, trucks and cars are built to run longer it says here that quality improvement picked up in the 90s. That's right. So now many of those cars and trucks are 13 to 20 years old. Yes, there are millions of them out there still on the road. That's like my 96 Chevy Lumina, the 160,000 miles, still kicking. It says here $15 trillion is how much American taxpayers have forked over in the name of helping the poor since 1964, and the poverty rate hasn't moved. So those poor people don't need the presidents to declare a war on poverty. They just need the government to stay the hell out of the markets. So your NHS patients in England are put at risk by drug shortages. The problems due to medicines intended for the NHS use are being exported to other EU countries instead. Then we have this, foreign students jump the queue. Overseas candidates offered university places with lower grades than UK teenagers, mostly because the foreign students pay higher fees. So if this can show you where, what direction we're heading in, the baby box returns to Europe. That's right. Boxes where parents can leave an unwanted baby, common, was common in medieval Europe, has been making a comeback. You remember the mom who couldn't afford a kid and she tried selling it on Craigslist recently? From October 2011, Delaware woman tried to sell baby for Disney World trip. And while a fed up mother throws two sons from a 15th floor, killing both, police rescue malnourished girl from closet in Kansas City. Thank you.